right on into the lesson. And our topic is, our topic is walking with God. That, that's a loaded topic if you ask me. Pretty loaded. <laughs> walking with God. Um, last week we talked about hell and those who were going to be going to hell. I mean, it was strictly about hell. You know, last week lesson, but all of us agreed, all that was in service last week agreed that we didn't want to go there. We didn't want to go to that place called hell. And so, but there's only one other alternative, and we know what that alternative is, and that is to walk with God so you can walk on into heaven. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, I thank God. So we have a, a lot to talk about here on tonight. And I have a lot of notes and had different directions to go. But I think because of time, we're going to just stick right with the lesson as much as possible in the scriptures that's given to us. Our background scriptures, praise the Lord, are found in Genesis uh, the fifth chapter, the 22nd. And um, as I'm saying this, let somebody get each one of these um, uh, scriptures for us so we can read right on through them. Our background scriptures, Genesis, I want to get Genesis 5 and 22. And then if someone else would get, if you had the reader, just say, I've got it. Who's going to read? Okay, who can read for me Genesis 17, 1 through 15? Say, I got it. If you know you're going to read it, just say, I got it. We'll wait for you to get it. Okay, it. all right. Praise Genesis the Lord. 17. Yes, ma'am. 1 through 15. And then we have Galatians 5, 16 and 18. So we thank God. Walking with God. And we want to get as much out of this lesson as we possibly can. We want to go above and beyond what we already know, amen? And we want God to open our hearts and our understandings and give us some deeper knowledge into his word. Our central verse is found 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. So Lord, help me in Jesus' name. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, for we walk, we can, we can also read this together. Sin Okay, central verse. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. It, it, my, my, um, here it has parenthesis and quotation marks. <laughs> Amen. So um, I'm just going to, um, we have our scriptures. But we're gonna, I'm going to um, read you this definition for the word walk. And then we have two other definitions that will also come into to our lesson as we go further. But to walk means to pursue a course of action or a way of life. Yeah. Conduct oneself. Behave. Walk warily. Warily. To be or act in association. Continue in union. So walk is not just what we do with our two feet and legs. Amen. 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 Walk is a position. Walk is a, a, a standard of life. Uh -huh. yeah. You know, it's, it's who we are in this life, how we conduct ourselves, how we handle ourselves in our, in our private place and in the public place. We should be the same wherever we go. And that's our walk. That's who we are. That's our integrity. Amen. 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 So. Um, we're going to go ahead on and we're going to read the first Genesis 5 and 22 says. Then Enoch walked with God 300 years after he became the father of Jerusalem and he had other sons and daughters. Amen. So how many have heard of Enoch before? How many have heard that verse before? Amen. Amen. You heard? Let's go to. Um, so it says Enoch walked with God. Say that again. Real loud. Did he not walk with God 300 years before he became the father of Methuselah, and he had other sons and daughters? He walked with God 300 years. We don't even know anybody in our generation that lived 300 years or who have walked with God 300 years. But Enoch, it said he walked with God 300 years. That, that, that means to me 
you know, no, I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm going to tell you, to, uh, let's go and see what that really means. Let's get a picture of what that means for Enoch. Okay, let's go to Jude. Jude. And that's the, the, the book just before Revelation. Jude 14, because there's only one chapter. Jude verse 14 and 15. It's going to tell us a little bit more about Enoch. Amen. So verse 14 says, if you have it, say amen. amen. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of, of these, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with ten thousands of his angels to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds, which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches, which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Amen? Amen. So against who? Who's the him? He's executing judgment. I would say that him, is, is, is he talking about talking himself, or is he talking about God, who has talked Open their mouth against God. And so we know that Enoch walked with God for 350 years. And during that time, whatever time his ministry started, could have been around 30, which means he would have been preaching at least 320 years. Amen. And during that time, he was preaching. He was preaching to the people. And, and then... Um, during that time, he was preaching to the people, and if you would go back, now he was preaching righteousness and holiness and peace, you know, and fear of God. These people didn't have any of that going on. It was a land of, of evil on top of evil and on top of evil, but Enoch was the man that stood, and he was the seventh after Adam. So this was real early on, you know, I don't know how many... Uh, years, but we know uh, how the age went on, went on during that time. So a lot of years may have gone by, quite a few years by, by the seventh generation, but it was very early compared to where we are today. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. In that um, 22nd chapter, can you go ahead on and read the next two verses? In uh, G Genesis 5, 22. We're going to put this together with Enoch, about concerning Enoch. And, it's, and I'll go with verse 23. And all the days of Enoch were 365 65 years, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Amen. So we need to get that part in there. So we, want to, so we know that he walked with God, and during that time of his walk with God, he was preaching and teaching and exhorting and, and warning the people. And then his walk with God was so precious in the sight of God. It was so awesome in the sight of God. It was so marvelous in the sight of God that it says, and Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him took him. Yeah. I, when I was younger, I used to say, that's the only way I want to go. I don't want to have to go through the, the process, the human yeah. process of, of dying and sickness. And just, yeah. Lord, let me. But, but, you know, God took him because he evidently had a perfect walk with God, a pure walk with God. Amen. Pure in his heart with God. And God marveled and he took him, took him home. He passed, he passed up all the normal processes of human nature of going back into the dust. God took him. Amen. And so um, walking with God in the light of Enoch, what can we learn from him? I mean, I know I've already said a lot, but <laughs> he walked with God. His conduct was pleasing in the sight of God. He was doing what God brought us here to do. He, God gave us, put us here on this earth to glorify him. Enoch noted that the people were not glorifying God. So his message was to fear God. You're not living right. You're not doing right. This is not why he created us. And he had a powerful message and he stuck with it. He didn't give up. He didn't get discouraged. 
300 some odd years, some of us would have gotten discouraged in 50 years. <laughs> but he, listen, he believed in what he was preaching. He believed in what he was talking about. He believed in God. He knew for a fact that one day God was going to come back. He knew for a fact that one day God was going to send a Savior. And his message was just like um, John the Baptist, pretty much so. I mean, it was even more powerful than that because God said, but John, John the Baptist, he said, make the, the way plain. Stop doing all what you're doing. Correct yourself. Get ready for the coming of the Messiah. And so Enoch we're going to learn from this. His walking with God was a walk that pleased God, and it was a walk that glorified God, yeah. and it was a walk that he did the work of God during his lifetime in this world. He didn't get caught up in the world and let the world pull him in and pull him under. He stayed with the word. He stayed with the message. Amen? Amen. So much so that how beautiful. That wording is that God took him. Precious, precious, precious. All right. So any any anybody had any thoughts about Enoch that I had that I haven't quite brought out yet? Any thoughts that you want to explain it in a more deeper sense or more a different sense? Come on and let's get into this lesson. Amen. Amen. We're gonna go. Are you sure? I know I didn't say everything. Come on now. <laughs> <laughs> What, what, in, in, in your spirit, what, what is it about Enoch that, that, that really caught your attention? Your, your, what you want to say about him? We know who he is. Haven't you met Enoch before? No, because God took him. But, <laughs> but uh, okay, we're going to move on. <laughs> uh, 17 and uh, 1 through 15. Now, I, I want you to, who's whoever going to read this, to kind of read it with some um, dramatics, put the, you know, who's saying, and God, and Abraham saying, okay, okay, thank you, real loud, real loud. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to him and said, I am God Almighty, walk before me faithfully and be blameless. Then I will make my covenant between me and you and will greatly increase your number. Mm. Abraham fell face down and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You will be the father of many nations. No longer will you be called Abram. Your name will be Abraham. For I have, for I have made you a father of many nations. I will make you very fruitful. I will make nations of you, and mm. kings will come out of you, mm. excuse me, will come from you. I will establish my covenant as an everlasting covenant between me and you and your descendants after you for the generations to come, mm. to be your God mm. and the God of your descendants well. after you. The whole land of Canaan, Canaan, where you now reside as a foreigner, I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you, and I will be their God. Mm -hmm. Then God said to Abraham, as for you, you must keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, for the generations to come. This is my covenant with you and your descendants after you, the covenant you are to keep. Every male among you shall be circumcised. You are to undergo circumcision, and it will be a sign of the covenant between me and you. For the generations to come, every male among you, mm -hmm, eight mm -hmm. days old, mm -hmm. must be circumcised, including those born in your household or brought with money from a foreigner, those who are not your offspring. Whether born in your household or brought with your money, they must be circumcised. <laughs> my covenant is your flesh to be in my covenant in your flesh is to be an everlasting covenant. Any uncircumcised male who has not been circumcised in the flesh will be cut off <laughs> from his people. He has broken my covenant. God also said to Abraham, as for Sarah. 
Sarah, your wife, you are no longer to call her Sarah. Her name will be Sarah. <laughs> That was good, that was good, that was good. That brought it all into perspective because the covenant of circumcision, that's the title of my chapter 17, but God did so much more than that before he got to that. He did so much more, but the topic is walking with God. God and Abraham was having a communion together. They were talking. They were a communion. God was laying it down as to what was going and what is going and, and when, where, and how. Amen? God and Abraham was communing together, talking together. Abraham had some concerns. He had some questions. God had all the answers. Amen? And so Abraham went, um, uh, God, there are so many verses in here. Um, because I didn't go the route I wanted to go, <laughs> I can't go the route I want to go. <laughs> but anyway, the, the, what we want to see in this, in this walk, is that Abraham listened to God. Yeah. Yeah. The questions he asked were to get an understanding, a better understanding, and, and, and to see just how much further God was going to bless him. Because, and I said just how much further, because he brought in his son uh, and asked questions about what about his son. Um, um, Eaton, what was his son's name? <laughs> the, okay, anyway, and I don't even think we read that part. Ishmael. Oh, we didn't even go that far. Okay, I went, I went that far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he is in the first 20. <laughs> I said I went further than that. But, he, but Abraham asked questions. The thing I want you to get out of this is everything God said to Abraham, God brought it to pass. Yeah. Amen. And not only that, as God was talking with Abraham, Abraham believed God. Amen. And so Abraham also, even though there's a verse here where Abraham fell, his, fell to the ground, his face to the ground and started laughing and said, shall I, a 90, 100 year old man, bring forth a child and, and Sarah bring 90 years old, bring forth a child? And he laughed. He, Abraham laughed. Sarah laughed. She got in trouble. <laughs> But Abraham's laugh was a laugh of joy, I believe, a laugh of, of, of wow, really, God? You know, because they're having this conversation, you know? And his, his laugh was different from Sarah's laugh, and we're not going to talk about her laugh because she's not in this, and I'm not going to talk about her because when I get to her, I, you know, we can, we, can, we can relate at that time. So Abraham's laugh, he, he, so this is beautiful. He's talking with God, and he's laughing, and God is explaining and instructing him. And there was the part, the last verse that I'm going to go into is verse um, 15. Let's see, 14 and 15. And 14 says, and the uncircumcised man child, man child, whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that, um, that soul shall be be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. Okay, and we know what the covenant is, that he should circumcise all the male child in his house, even the slaves that he bought, and from the youngest to the oldest. And then Abraham, the 15th says, And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And so he even went all the way down. He told Abraham, I'm changing your name. I'm changing your wife's name. I'm changing your household, that they're going to be my, that I'm going to be their God, and they're going to be my children. You're going to circumcise all the boys and everything. Now, 
the reason I, I'm getting confused here is because I read further and I'm trying to tell this better. Because <laughs> there was a part where Abraham, let's see, I think it might be verse 17 and uh, 16 and 17 says, and I blessed, and I blessed 17 says, and Abraham fell on his face. Um, and okay, and Abraham, the one I want to tell you is that same day after the conversation with God, Abraham went and began to do what God told him to do with his household, call the men together and have them all circumcised. Okay, and he said, um, and then, and as for, and, and he also circumcised himself at the age of 100. His son, um, Ishmael, was 13 years old. They both got circumcised. And, and the scripture says he did this all in that day, in that day. That the Lord, right after the Lord finished talking to him, he went to work. He got busy. He didn't uh, put it off and let me think about this. That's a hard request. That's a hard. See, when you're walking with God and you know that God is speaking to you, what you're going to wait for? What you're looking for? You're looking for a way of escape. That's what you're looking for. Amen. I remember the story about a little boy who saw his dad um, preparing the Sunday service. His dad was the pastor. He was preparing the Sunday sermon. And the little boy walked in and said, Dad, what you doing? And he said, son, I'm preparing my sermon for tomorrow. And he, and he said, is, is God telling you what to say? He said, yes, he is. God is telling me what to say. And the little boy said, so why are you balling up the paper and throwing it away? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's writing in it. That's not it. That's not a who's telling who, you know? So we have to, if we know that we know that we're listening to God, then we can step out right then and there and get to work. There's no waiting for a confirmation because you know that you know in your heart that God has spoken to you and God is going to give you the right way to do everything that needs to be done. Amen. He, he totally, he totally instructed um, Abraham here. What was interesting to me is I compared this um, circumcision of Abraham's household, all the men, to the time when um, Jacob and his brothers, uh, his, their sister was raped by this guy and, and, what he, and, and the, uh, another nation. And so the father of the other nation made a, a pact with, with um, um, Jacob. Who was I? Who was Israel? Made a pact with him that our daughters will marry your sons, and your daughters will marry our sons. But Jacob told him that you know we are the children of God, and anybody we take, any male we bring it to our family has to be circumcised. They agreed on that. Let me tell you real quick. They circumcised all their male in the same day, and why? <laughs> Which left, just from that story, you know that's a miserable, miserable thing. All those men were sick. They were out. They were unable. And that's when those brothers came in and destroyed and killed all those men while they were down. And in the story of Abraham, there's, there is God didn't have, to, didn't have to tell Abraham to do anything because God told him to do this. Abraham did it, and it's God responsibility to make sure that everything comes out all right. So yeah. Abraham didn't have to worry, although this is the first I'm hearing about it, so maybe they didn't even know what it was going to be like, you know, but I imagine it was the same way. They were, you know, sick all at least two days, 24 hours, you know, all the men in the house. There's no protection around that house at this point in time, no protection, but God protected them. Amen. Yeah. Amen, because their men were out. So I just wanted to throw that in there. That's very interesting to me. So <laughs> all kinds of thoughts come to you and, and, and scriptures when you're studying. Amen. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be pacing the floor in my house, walking back and forth. I can't sit down, and it's just coming and just coming. I'm, I'm walking with God. I'm talking with God. You know, you know, really, as you think about it, that's what's happening because I'm listening. You know, and so we're going to move right along and uh, we're going to go to. Um, let me see. We're going to go to Galatians 5, 16 and 17 is just those two verses. Um, just in case in, in the devotional reading, somebody get the Galatians 5. The covenant, it says definition for covenant and a um Usually form, uh, can somebody read that for me? Covenant in the gray box, it says covenant. 
a usual a usually formal, solemn, and binding agreement. Compact. A written agreement or promise usually under seal between two or more or more parties, especially for the performance of some action. Mm-hmm. Amen. And then circumcision. Just so we'll have the definitions. The it act of circumcising, especially a Jewish rite performed on male infants as a sign of inclusion in the Jewish religious community. The cutting off of the foreskin of males that is practiced as a religious rite by Jews and Muslims and as a sanitary measure in modern surgery okay. and putting off of the body of sin of the flesh. Amen. Amen. So we have an understanding that um, Jesus was, uh, uh, was born of the Jews. Was he circumcised? Did, G did his parents... Have him circumcised? And at what age, if so? Jesus, when he was a baby, when he was born, the covenant is that all the males of the Jews, so did he? Yeah, and, and how, and, and yeah, the scripture tells us the Mary, remember they went, took him to the temple and had the procedure of the, <clears throat> I forgot the exact um, term that they used, but the, the, the process had to be done, and he was at, at, at the age of eight days old. And yeah. Simeon blessed him. And so, um, <clears throat> so who has Galatians 5, 16, and 8, 16 through 18? Just read it out loud for us, if you will. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. For these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. Amen. Amen. So did you hear oh, that? I have 18. Uh-huh. Go ahead. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Amen. So if you're led. I have a question. I'm going to put it out to the audience, to our attendees. Is walking with God the same as walking in the Spirit? That's my question. So we just read Galatians. You heard that. And it said, walk in the spirit, and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Is walking with God the same as walking in the spirit? I hear some people saying, is it unanimous? Or does somebody have another? another? OK, we have a few that believe. Anybody that want to tell us why you don't believe? Or, don't, or, or if you don't know, I believe. <laughs> I believe so too. I, I know it is so. I know it is so. Uh, um, <clears throat> they that worship God must do so how? In spirit and in truth. Spirit and, in truth. and so in the natural, in the flesh, the things that we see, the things that we touch, the, the people, and that's all natural. And we can walk with each other, we can talk with each other, and we can feel and we can touch him. But when it comes to God, we don't see him. We really don't even hear him audibly unless he does something special in somebody's life. But we're walking with him in the spirit. We're walking by faith, our central verse, by faith, not by sight. We can't see him. We can't hear him audibly, but because of his spirit that's in us, we can hear and walk and communicate and commune with God. Amen? Amen. Amen. So, and if we desire and if we stay with it, if we practice it, do you know this is a, a, a life that has to be lived on purpose? Yes. You have to desire it. Yes. You have to practice it. Yes. And the more you practice it, the better yes. you get. Yes. Amen. But what are we practicing? Walking uh, according to God's word. Yes. And do you know you cannot walk in the spirit without knowing what God's word says? Right. You got to know what the word says in order to even walk in the spirit. Amen. Amen. And so and, um, and, and do you not know? He said so so that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yes. The lust of the flesh. We don't need a book to tell us what that is. Uh -huh. We need we need the law to make it visible, make us realize Oh, God, yes. God it does not, this is not holy, it's not righteous. 
but it just happens. It, we're just that way. It's the flesh. It's the sin nature in the flesh that we're going to, whether we have a law or don't have the law, we're going to be disobedient to the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. And so we don't need somebody uh, wrote a song or a movie or whatever. We don't need anybody to tell, tell us how to be bad. Amen. Amen. Something like that. But we do need God's word, not just to tell us how to be good, but how to be holy and righteous yeah, before yeah. him, how to be pure, how to be the people that he created us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen. There, are, there are good people in the world, as we consider good because we see with our eyes what they're doing, but we don't see their heart. God sees the heart. Amen? Amen. And then also God, God's word said all good things come from above. So even if their heart is not right, but if they give you something good that you needed right then and there, thank God. Thank God, because all good things come. It's still a good thing to you, you know. Yes. Amen. Okay, so uh, I know we started this class at about 8 o'clock, so we're going to go ahead on and read the introductory and see what we can, where we can go from there, and then I think I'll, I'll, I'll um, take my walk on home <laughs> with God. <laughs> Amen. Let's read the introduction. Sorry about that. Okay. God has always shown love and concern for his, his, his human family. When a person loves someone, he wants to be with that person and he wants to share time and conversation with that person. When you love someone, you want to touch him or her. You want to spend time walking with him or her. So it is not surprising that God asked Abraham to walk with him. It's not surprising because that's the reason God created us, to walk with him. To, and so he can come and visit us and walk within us in the cool of the day after we've done our chores, you know. <laughs> Amen. So, and, and so with, with this is saying if it's in us to be that way, and we're made in the image of God, amen? So then it should not be surprising. This is what God created us to be, to be people that will walk with him and to have uh, affections for him and, and things such as that, just like we have affections for one another, amen? Okay, Abraham, somebody read the next verse for me, please. Real loud. Abraham was one of God's cho choice sons whom God loved and had a strong quest for him. First, God assured Abram that he was El Shaddai, the Almighty God, the one who was all powerful, the one who was able to do the impossible, the one who was able to keep his promise to him. But God wanted Abram to walk with him, have integrity, and be mature in faith, which would require total obedience to him. Learning and showing obedience is a sign of maturity, it is one of the signs of a person being perfected. David said, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me, mm -hmm. Psalm 138 and 8. Mm -hmm. When we make the decision to walk with God, we know there are things that must be perfected in our lives. But we also believe God will help us in those areas. Sanctify yourself, and the God of peace will sanctify you whole. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23. 1 Thessalonians 5. 23. Amen. So in the middle of that, uh, it says, but God wanted Abraham to walk with him have integrity, and be mature in his faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. Down from that, uh, I highlighted it is one of the signs of a person being perfected. When we are able to be mature in our faith, when we're ha walking in integrity, we're continually growing, continually walking, we stand with it, and that's Perfecting us. I, that's why I say it gets better and better as you practice it. Yes. What gets better and better? The, 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 the presence of God, but then your walk gets better and better. You become more and more like who we're trying to be, like Jesus Christ. We become more and more like him as we practice it. So it's something that you have to do every day on purpose, whether you feel like it or you don't feel like yes. it. Because um, God has this, God has spoken. Let the church say Amen and get busy. Amen. Amen. So um, <laughs> I love this. Uh, 
walk discussion. It says walking with God requires human submission. Do we agree? Do you agree? Yeah. Human yeah. submission. Yeah. We agree. So that means we have, that lets us know that we have a free will to choose. Amen. Yeah. And we want to choose God every time. We want to choose to walk with him every time, every situation. I don't know how much time I have to, but does anybody, hmm? I'm talking, oh, does, would anybody like to share an experience that they've had walking with, that they know that they know? This, you know what? That walk with God, it can be a few minutes, a few hours. It can be, you know, and then you can get busy doing what you need to do, but the Lord has filled you up and enabled you to, Finish your task, you know. And so when I say a few minutes, a few hours, God doesn't leave you, but he allows you to go on and, and do what you need to do in this life. So don't feel like, it is, it, you know, you sh something's wrong because you're not hearing God every minute of the day or every 24 hours, you know. He's, he's with you, enabling you to continue on. But th there's times, and, and the more you walk with him, you'll find throughout the day. That he's going to have a little word, whisper a little word in your heart. Amen. And so um, it can be a short amount of time. It can be a, a, a good span of time. It can, you know, if you go on a retreat and just meditate and just let yourself go, you can, you can really commune with God for a pretty good while, you know. Yeah. But we can't all just um, uh, go lay in the grass all day long. So but God and God knows that. Amen. When he put Adam in the garden, he told him to keep the garden till it. So there's work to be done, but he will bless us and he will be with us. Never leave us or forsake us. Amen. So my question was, who wants to share? I'm given an, uh, a testimony opportunity to share a moment of walking with God in your life. And you just know, you know how you know, because when it's over with, you just, uh, yeah. You're kind of drained, and it was, and it was just so good. Oh Lord, I know that was you. <laughs> and you feel giddy, and you know, I don't know what a man feels like, but you know, it's, oh man, you just want to walk, and you just wish there's somebody you can call and thank you, Lord. And you, you just go into a praise, you know. Something happens. Something happens. All right. Anybody? Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night, um, and a song will come to me. And I will sing that song to God because it's something I want to say to God in the song. Mm. And I will feel God literally wrapping his arms around me, mm. letting me know, I heard your song, and I heard your heart. Mm -hmm. And that's a special time. That's, a special yeah. time. That, that's, my, that's my connection with God. Yeah. Abraham, as, as we read in the scripture, he fellowshiped with God. I fellowship with God seems like in the middle of the night, 3, 4 a.m. Sometimes I'll just wake up. Nothing is wrong. I'll just wake up. And a song will come to me for my God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's my special time. That's it. You don't know what your day is going to be like, and we need to grab mm -hmm. those right. special times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So especially if you're working full-time jobs, I really take my hat off to people who work full-time jobs because once I did and you don't have time to take uh, 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 15 20 minutes mm -hmm. to go have a quiet prayer but on your way to a task mm -hmm. you can talk to God mm -hmm. it doesn't take a long time it doesn't take but a long I love time. my middle of the night mm -hmm. experience mm -hmm. and I'm grateful Yes, ma'am. That's when mine hit me, too, in the middle of the night. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's beautiful, because I know exactly what you mean. And especially in these um, latter, last few years of my life, um, it, it's special. It's really special. Anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? So I was in... Huh, go ahead. Go ahead. Um, there's... Uh, it's hard to, to remember just one, but um, I remember when I first got saved, I was, um, I was working in Hayward, and I was talking to my sister on the phone. I was getting off work, talking about the Lord. I was learning more about Him, mm -hmm. and I was so excited, uh, but I had to go to the gas station 
get some gas before I went across the San Mateo Bridge. I was at the gas station just to talk, and I said, I feel so good. I just feel like running, <laughs> pumping gas, and, and talking. I just, I felt like he was right there, mm. and he was listening, and he was just standing there with me, just hanging out with me, uh, pumping gas with me. I, I can't explain it, but there was this feeling that came over me mm -hmm. and I remember saying loud I feel good <laughs> I just feel like running <laughs> at the gas station uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> and that came out out of your mouth out loud yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 it'll happen that's beautiful it will happen anyone else anyone else I'll share that since Sister, mm -hmm. um, Sister Mary Ann mentioned the song talk to me sit down Sister Mary Ann mentioned that song for her, mm -hmm. I was so tired in my body one night, just, and I just laid down, and there is a song that says, mm, just breathe, and it says, just breathe, mm -hmm. and sit at my feet, and that's all that came to my mind. When I laid down, mm -hmm. the song just overwhelmed me, mm -hmm. and I could hear the song, I could hear the radio in my mind. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful song. And my mouth opened, I was like, and I began to sing just that part mm -hmm. and just to relax and to be able to sit. Mm -hmm. and, mm. Mm -hmm. He just overwhelmed me at that time. Yeah. I said, this is real. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Woo! It was so good, and I'm not sure when I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. I was a tired child, I thought. Mm -hmm. But as you and Sister Mary were saying, and, and it's just your time that you had nothing else, that there was nothing else surrounding you, there was nothing else interrupting you. He just set that, side, that time aside. He already knew I was going to be a little, and he just said, just. Just breathe yeah. and sit at my feet. Mm. I didn't even say that. I just, whew. and the, the spirit of the Lord just will, it will just, it will just will shower you mm -hmm. with that, anoint that, that. <laughs> that presence, his, his, his presence, yes. With that presence. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. it's absolutely, it's absolutely wonderful. It's, a, it's yeah. absolutely it's absolutely not yeah. explainable. Really. Like when you say you walk through your house. It's just wonderful. Thank Amen. You so it, 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 it is almost unexplainable. It's just that good, that precious, and that's just, just that personal, too. You know, it's like oh, yeah, it's just something. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it's, it's beautiful. God God has um, taught me that I have experienced the beauty of God's presence during the time I was taking care of my mom. Before then, my mom and my brother, before them, I was just in my word, and everything was the letter of the word, you know, and, and I was enjoying that. That was good. That was good. It was just the letter of the word. But thank God for that because unknowingly I was getting it inside me to because I couldn't always just read it and just... Uh, and, and when I started taking care of my mom and things, my brothers and things began to get, get more and more um, worse for them. I, I began to, all of that that I was putting in, didn't realize I was preparing myself, yes. Yes. but I, the Lord began to cover me with, with his, his, the spirit of his word, with the spirit of his word. And he would talk to me through the night. And that's why I said, <laughs> that's my time too, through the night, because I think sometimes I just stay up and then just go to bed around two or three, just, uh, I just, and then, and then, and, but during that time, I'm numb, I'm numb, and then I'll go to bed, and then that's when the Lord, I'm just, I'm just getting in bed at three o'clock, and then that's when he just, that's when you, you, I realized why I was feeling numb. I didn't know how to express during that time of just sitting. So I was sitting, resting, and waiting. And then by the time I went to bed, I could feel his loving arms. I could just feel that presence of the Lord. So he was just 
putting me to that point, you know. And so I'm going to end this. This is beautiful, a beautiful, so much more that can be said. But I, I just want you to get from this what's going on when we're walking with the Lord, that we, he is present in our lives. And at the time that we're walking with him, we're listening to him, we're receiving instructions to, from him, yeah. and then we're going on and we're going to do that thing. That the scripture says to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us. So he's not telling us to, uh, it's okay to bring all these things to him, but he's saying, I already know all that, but, and, and, and I'm going to take care of all that. But you need to listen. There's work to be done, you know, yes. in the kingdom. And so seek first the kingdom, yes, yes. you know. And all these things will be added unto you. And when you're seeking the kingdom, you're seeking him. You're think, seeking his instructions. Amen. Amen. Seeking because you're ready to get busy. Amen. Amen. I, I heard, I'm going to end with this. I heard a man say, if you can't hear God talking to you, if you just can't seem to hear him talking to you, take the Bible and read it out loud. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Take the Bible, take the word of God and start reading it out loud. You'll hear them all right. That's him talking. Amen. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord. That's our lesson for tonight. Whew, and if you want to hear all my other notes, which I would have brought out had we started on time, it's a bunch of it. I, I can talk to you. You can call. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you for this opportunity, Pastor. And, and uh, we'll be back to our president. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, I thank you.